in the name of Jesus. So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Free, set free, acquitted, absolved, forgiven, baptized, worded, bodied and blooded, saved, saved by the Son, freed by the Son of God, liberated, no more chains, civil, ceremonial, moral or otherwise. The law can't condemn you anymore, not in Jesus. Jesus is the end of the law to righteousness for all those who believe. You are free, uncontainable, win or lose free, broke or rich free, liberated from guilt, from pain, condemnation, completely, unrestrainedly free. Take they our lives, good fame, child and wife. These all be gone, the victory has been won, the kingdom ours remaineth free. Crucify you, you'll just raise from the dead. That's free. Because you can't lose your salvation in the gospel. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. You'd have to leave Jesus to lose your salvation, and you are the baptized. Why would you ever leave the one who lived his life for you and died the death you deserve? For in the gospel, in the faith of Jesus, the law cannot condemn you anymore. You are freed from the law. You are freed from hell. You are free as free as Jesus. You don't have to worry anymore about if I'll have enough faith, if I'll believe enough, if I've got enough uh, change in my life or works. Ugh. I don't know how they sign that, but ugh. no more of that. Not in Jesus. You don't have to worry about making it to heaven in Jesus at all. Is Jesus in heaven? Well, he is, so that you will be too. He's sitting at the right hand of God. Then, you are, that, then he's preparing a seat for you up there too. For where Jesus is, there you must be. Believing in Jesus, you must be saved. You can't tell him that. If you tell him that, Pastor Borkart, they'll just go and fornicate. They'll just send te nasty text messages on, to each other or fall into awful sins like homosexuality. If you tell young people they're free, they'll just sin. How stupid is that? Yes, I can. Yes, I must. Yes, I have. Because if we're going to talk about the Reformation this week, we must talk about the gospel. You must be taught to here I stand in the gospel, on the gospel. I must tell you that the law and works cannot save you. Only Jesus can. And in fact, if I don't tell you the gospel, your youth leaders and pastors will pick up fruit and throw it at me, and then I will have to run from them when they tar and feather me right outside this beautiful chapel. And if you're too young to know what tar and feather means, use the Google and you'll find it. And dear saints of God, don't fall for the common idea amongst Christians, Lutherans even, that, your, that faith alone saves you, but not only faith saves you. Like faith saves you, but you need something else along with faith, like works, or a decision, or a change in your behavior or life. That's gross too, and that's not Luther. That's Calvin. That's a whole different conference. Here's what you can stand on on the last day in Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Come on. Only Jesus. <laughs> That's the gospel. And you being free by Jesus isn't ever the cause of your sin. You are responsible for your sin. You sin because you're a slave to sin. You were conceived in it. You were chained to its death. You were captive by its seduction. You slip into it. You run toward it. You are dead, all dead, rotting corpses who only know how to live dead in your sins until you die. You are like criminals 
who having been released from prison don't know anything else other than the prison of sin and death. So you go and sin more because of the prison of the law is easier than the freedom of the gospel. You are sin addicts. De born dead and doomed to be living dead until the sin finally takes its toll on you and we bury you in the ground dead. You need to repent of your sins. You need to stop them. Stop judging and tearing others up, finding fault or gossiping, hating, rejoicing in evil things. Stop living the way you want to live. Constantly being unchaste and indecent. The hate the not forgiving others, the coveting, the disobeying of your parents, the disobeying of your parents, the disobeying of your parents has to stop. The despising of God's word and the misuse of his name. Stop those things today. Stop them like your life depends upon it because it does. You can't live in your sins and think you can somehow manipulate God with some lame idea that he has to save you no matter what sinful things you do. Living in your sins is simply incompatible with the Christian faith. For it sets you outside of the Jesus who died and rose to save you from your sins. And it will end with you getting tossed into hell. The law, dear saints of God, that's the law we love to talk about as we inflict it upon others uh, and those who wish to put themselves under the law, any law, whether ceremonial or moral or commandment, will be judged and condemned by the very same law. For by the law, any law, any use of the law, shall no flesh be justified before God. But now, says Jesus, the gospel. Apart from the law is the gospel. If the Son sets you free, then you are truly, really free indeed. You have been liberated from the law and its demands and condemnations, freed from the Son, uh, from the, your slavery to sin, from your death, even from hell itself, released from the need to sin and to live in your sins any longer. The law by itself can't free you. All it can do is add to more accusation and punishment. But in the gospel, in Jesus, in the faith of Jesus, you are free. You, are, you have been set free from your sins. That means you don't have to do those sins any longer. Your slavery to having sin is over with three magical words. I forgive you. The chains of sin break in the water. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The death and hell that you have come in and that you deserve for what you've done has a remedy. Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Take, drink, this is my blood shed for you. That means you are free, not only from the guilt of your sin, but free from having to sin anymore. Living in your sins is the very thing that your Lord Jesus has saved you from. You are forgiven free, freed by the Son, familyed by God the Father, sunned by the Son of God who loved you and gave up his life for you. You will now live for others. You'll be chaste and decent, free to live differently than how you feel you were born liberated to put others first in the particular place where he has placed you. You are enlivened to walk steadfast in his faith through this life like you own the entire place because God is your father and he has given his son so that nothing but smiles and sunshine are on you even on the cloudiest day of the year. Because the sun did darken one day, when the Son of God hung on the cross, answering for your sins, Jesus lived the perfect life under the law, fulfilling for you the law, in, in fulfilling it in your place. He took the slavery of your sin upon himself, and then his death took the eternal punishment for your slavery. You are free 
set free, acquitted, absolved, forgiven, baptized, worded, bodied and blooded, saved, free by the Son of God. In Jesus, you must rise from the dead. In Jesus, you are free. In Jesus, you are forgiven. And in Jesus, you will live forever. For if the Son sets you free, you are in the name of Jesus.